want people to know uh, about you as an artist? That, um, I don't know if it's about me, but I think just creativity in general, um, you know, just doing what you want is so important. You know, doing what you feel is, is right and what connects with you is important. And I know that might be, you know, cliche, trite, corny, sappy, whatever you want to say. But, you know, um, one of the coolest things about what I'm experiencing right now, as far as people responding to the songs I wrote and what I what I decided to do, is that it really is me. You know, it's, it's so when people say they f with it, it's like they f with me and that feels cool. You know, and um, I mean, everybody who's listening, like, and, and who listened, and, and you know, I mean, it's just crazy, man. Like, right. you know, I'm, I, I, it's cool, like, you know, and I, I want people to know that I'll continue doing that, no matter what the f they think I should make. I'll always make what I want to make, yeah. and what I feel is, is the tightest. It's not necessarily easy to earn respect as a new artist in the music industry. Yet when Frank Ocean first arrived on the scene, the public instantly praised his profound lyricism and unique spin on R&B music. Not only did he receive admiration from the general public, but his fellow peers and industry veterans also knew he was special. Even before Ocean's debut album was released, there was an overwhelming demand for new music from the singer. And though the stakes were high, Frank rose to the occasion. Channel Orange, his first full-length record, was met with universal claim. The project was lauded for its distinct style and demonstration of self-assuredness. It's no wonder Rolling Stone included it in their 500 greatest albums of all time list in 2020. His sophomore album, Blonde, also revered by the masses, found its place on that very same list in the top 100. Over the years, Frank Ocean has cultivated an obsessive cult fan base apart from casual audiences. These are the folks who randomly cause a frenzy on Twitter every now and then in speculation of upcoming music. They're also often quick to decode his online or personal whereabouts, hoping for some clue about a new venture. But what exactly is it about Frank Ocean's music that has left such an impression on people? After all, he's released less than a handful of projects in over a decade since his start. In this video, we'll explore the brilliance of Frank Ocean's artistry. We'll highlight the characteristics that set Ocean apart from his contemporaries and most musicians. All in all, there will be no doubt why Frank Ocean will go down as one of the most exceptional artists of our time. If there's one element of Frank Ocean's music that stands out most, it's definitely his songwriting. Thus, it shouldn't surprise folks that the singer wrote for the likes of John Legend, Brandy, and Justin Bieber before focusing on his own catalog. The number of themes and concepts Ocean covers in his debut mixtape alone is noteworthy. In hindsight, it makes perfect sense why music heavy hitters including Beyonce, Jay-Z, and Kanye West immediately sought Frank out for their upcoming projects. The tracklist is comprised of songs such as American Wedding, sung over the the Eagles iconic Hotel California instrumental which underscores frivolous weddings in western culture. In the second half, Ocean compares marriages in Islam with the trivial American one he describes in the first verse. By posing this comparison, listeners contemplate the downsides of both hasty weddings in the US and strict ones in other countries. On the song We All Try, Frank weighs in on the age-old question of whether human beings are inherently good or evil. According to the R&B sensation, he shares the opinion with 18th century Swiss philosopher Jean-Jacques Rousseau that people are good by nature. Throughout the song, Ocean professes a list of things he believes, reiterating the notion of you must stand for something or fall for anything. Some of Frank's most memorable stances are that the Apollo 11 moon landing was a hoax, that marriage is between two people who love each other, irrespective of gender, and that a woman should have the choice to abortion. The substance doesn't stop there, as he sings about fatherlessness in There Will Be Tears, the process of growing as a songwriter on Dust, and redeeming himself of the guilt from past relationships on Swim Good. Although Frank's ability to traverse so many topics is impressive, how he paints pictures for his listeners is extraordinary. For example, on that very same track Swim Good, audiences go through a journey of the singer diving his Lincoln car down the boulevard with several human hearts in his trunk causing blood to leak from the vehicle. His ultimate mission is to run the car off of a cliff and literally dive into the ocean. This imagery, coupled with the compelling storytelling, is unparalleled. 
Of course, fans can't forget the most popular cut on the mixtape, Novocaine, a record simply about the powerful effects of mixing drugs with sex. This song showcases Frank's versatility, as he doesn't always have to be philosophical. Overall, the 40 minute long project was substantial enough to have people genuinely invested in Ocean's artistry for the long run. Fortunately for fans, the singer had only showcased a small fraction of his potential. If anyone was moved by the number of topics Frank Ocean explored on Nostalgia Ultra, they were surely blown away by Channel Orange. On his debut album, Ocean narrates a wide array of stories. For instance, Crack Rock highlights substance abuse and its implications. The Pharrell-produced Sweet Life was inspired by the singer's relocation to Ladera Heights from New Orleans after Hurricane Katrina. The community, also known as the Black Beverly Hills, offered him a preview of wealth and leisure. However, Ocean critiques this lifestyle for its numbing effects and lack of concern for the rest of the world. Similarly, Super Rich Kids illustrates the spoiled yet neglected lives of affluent teenagers, while Pyramids offers an elaborate tale about a pimp who falls in love with one of his sex workers. Lost, on the other hand, details the story of a drug supplier who uses his girlfriend as a mule. This creativity makes Channel Orange such a force to reckon with. Frank's ability to develop various characters and have his listeners walk in their shoes is remarkable. It's especially so in R&B music, as a genre often rife with the same old themes like love, sex, and heartbreak, Ocean adds layers and dimensions to his content that pushes the envelope. This is not to say that R&B artists don't have the capacity to color outside the lines. After all, musicians such as Stevie Wonder, Marvin Gaye, Janet Jackson, Mariah Carey, Erykah Badu, and others have nuanced bodies of work. Still, most mainstream R&B songs and albums rarely ever reinvent the wheel. Some more themes on Frank's debut LP include unrequited love on bad religion, as well as idolatry and celebrity obsession on monks. With such varied subjects, it's obvious why the album is considered one of the best of all time. Little did fans know that they would have to wait another four years for new music from the artist. People frequently describe Frank Ocean's music as existential. According to Wikipedia, existentialism is a form of philosophical inquiry that explores the issue of human existence. Existentialist philosophers explore questions about the meaning, purpose, and value of human existence. Many of the aforementioned songs by Frank dabble with this theme. On his sophomore album Blonde, Ocean drives these ideas even further. The track Siegfried reflects on conformity and whether the artist is living in the idea of another man's mind. By wrestling with his life choices of whether he's a fool for settling for a place with nice views, listeners ponder their own life decisions. Even all the success, glitz, and glamour don't make the singer immune to the notions of following the status quo. It's reasonable to assume this lack of complacency is why fans get such meaningful work from the artist. Originally, Blonde was slated to be released just two years following his first album. Somewhere along the lines, that plan was forfeited. In a 2016 interview with the New York Times, he revealed, I had writer's block for almost a year. Going back and forth to the studio, Ocean would stare at monitors and come up with nothing, or nothing that I liked. It wasn't until he reconnected with a childhood friend that he began to feel inspired. Frank said, It made me feel as though I should talk about how I grew up more. The restraint practiced in this circumstance is nothing short of praiseworthy. While most recording artists would ride the waves of their early success and produce music despite their loss of creativity, or in some cases outsource their songwriting to others, Ocean drew back. The main priority for him was to put together the best work possible. It's not easy to have this sense of fortitude as a new artist in the music industry, especially in modern times. The oversaturation in today's landscape can pressure musicians to turn over material faster than ever. On top of that, capitalist culture can make Ocean's productivity seem peculiar, when really, creativity shouldn't always be dictated by deadlines and satisfying consumers. Nevertheless, it could also be true that Frank Ocean's frequency of releasing albums has also inspired some others to take a more measured angle. Artists including Kendrick Lamar, SZA, Beyonce, J. Cole, and even Cardi B have seemed to embrace the quality over quantity approach to releasing records. And though fans might become frustrated or react irrationally because of their anticipation, the result is almost always a body of work that is worth the wait and timeless. The way Frank Ocean defies music industry conventions is also worth pointing out. The singer rarely does interviews, has just over a handful of music videos, performs at whim, and has almost a non-existent social media presence. 
For most artists, this combination would easily be career suicide. But for Frank, it's become a part of his brand. Indeed, his quality of music is the sole reason he can get away with such minimalism. In an era where so many celebrities thrive off of gimmicks and overexposure, Ocean keeps it simply about the music. What's more, Frank completely dismisses the traditional measures of success in the music industry. Sales, chart positions, and awards are a total non-factor for him. Many people might be shocked to discover the artist has yet to spawn a single top 10 hit on the Billboard Hot 100. Until now, his highest charting song remains remains Calvin Harris's Slide featuring Migos, which reached number 25. As for his own tracks, Thinking About You is his highest charting song, peaking at number 32 on the Hot 100 in 2012. Normally, no one would commend a recording artist for failing to have successful charting hits. The reason why it's admirable in Ocean's case is that it's entirely intentional. Pyramids, the second single from Channel Orange, perfectly demonstrates this as 10-minute songs with no apparent chorus aren't exactly radio-friendly. It doesn't help that the song is about the ancient history of black women or that it transitions to a whole different sound halfway through. Likewise, Nikes, the lead and only single from Blonde, also sports a 5-minute runtime, with another absence of a definitive hook. Most people also don't remember that Blonde was initially released as an Apple Music exclusive. It became available on all other streaming platforms weeks later. It's important to highlight this fact because it means Frank would have been completely aware of how it would affect his album sales and the performance of the songs on the charts. Thus, it's clear the singer was trying to evade mainstream validation as much as possible. That same year, the star refused to submit any material to the Recording Academy for consideration. In 2016, the singer told the New York Times, That institution certainly has nostalgic importance. It just doesn't seem to be representing very well for people who come from where I come from. He went on to further claim, I think the infrastructure of the awarding, nomination, and screening system is dated. I'd rather this be my Colin Kaepernick moment for the Grammys than sit there in the audience. Undoubtedly, the album had the potential to win big at the ceremony, which again would translate into sales and overall popularity for Ocean. Therefore, the singer is sacrificing mass appeal for his principles. Another potentially detrimental choice Frank made early in his career was revealing he was in love with a man in 2012. Coming just a week before his debut album release, most people in the music industry would advise an artist like himself to be wary of such an admission. Certainly, he wasn't the first LGBT R&B artist, as Luther Vandross, Tevin Campbell, and others have had incredible success. The difference is that no mainstream singers publicly announce their sexuality at the beginning of their careers. Despite having any blueprint, Frank did something he could never return from. Luckily, due to society's evolution and the sincerity of Ocean's letter posted on Tumblr, his career has been largely unaffected by his lifestyle. If there's ever been proof of this, it's encompassed in his platinum-selling bisexual anthem, Chanel. It's undeniable that Frank Ocean's first two albums are classics. Whenever anyone revisits them, they're just as fresh sounding and profound as they were all those years ago. In some ways, the songs get even better with time, as audiences get older and can appreciate his music in more informed and mature ways. But there's more than lyrics that make this so. It's also Ocean's choice of production and overall sonic style. It can sometimes be difficult to categorize Frank in a particular genre. Some may label his music as alternative R&B, while others say it's progressive soul. Truthfully, the singer has dabbled in everything from trap, neo-soul, and psychedelic pop on his projects. The amalgamation of such sounds produces a sonic palette that is distinct and unlike anything else. Moreover, the combination of such production choices, lyrical vulnerability, and irresistible nonchalance has inspired countless acts that have come after Frank Ocean. People may not always realize it, but Ocean is surely one of the most influential artists of our generation. There are remnants of Frank's touch on the music of SZA, Kehlani, Lord, Daniel Caesar, Black, Brent Fires, Lucky Day, Khalid, Giveon, Steve Lacey, Georgia Smith, Omar Apollo, and Brock Hampton. This impact shouldn't be understated, considering his brief time in the game, not to mention his concise catalog. It's unclear what Frank Ocean has in store for the future. At this point, fans are so starved that they'd be happy with just about anything. The thing is, that's the exact opposite of what the songwriter feels comfortable offering. Ultimately, he competes with no one else but himself. The superstar has forged a lane all of his own, whereby he can do whatever he pleases. Some could even say, it's Frank Ocean's world, and we're all just living in it.
Thanks for watching. And if you enjoyed this video, feel free to like, comment, and subscribe. What are your thoughts about Frank Ocean's music? Do you agree or disagree with the sentiments provided? Lastly, what do you hope for him to do next with music?